Hey guys, what's up? It's Pal Wind. Uh, wow, it's been a while since my last guide or video that I've done like this in a presentation style. After a long break, I thought I'd share a little bit about the Nocarn build, as it's called, for Guardian Druids uh, and how to use it. Uh, you know, you're probably aware Bear is considered D or F tier by major sites like Subcreation and the general pop uh, popular opinion of the community is that they're not great. Uh, you know, I think bear is fine. Uh, I obviously, when I'm healing, get an opportunity to see other tanks just kind of olay some mechanics and they don't even know it existed because their class has the ability to do that. But bear, if you play it right, I found that I'm capable of doing all of those things. Uh, now, what does make it challenging for bears is that you have to know the mechanics and you have to use a tool for almost all of them, right? Um, so anyway, okay, enough about me. Great to have you back. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the Nocarn build. So it does require a uh, defensive heavy build. You give up one big fun toy, uh, Incarnation, in the process, and the Incarn, obviously, the, the Incarn DR talent. Um, and that doesn't feel great. But you know what does feel great? Staying alive. All right, so taking a look at the talent build here, let's start on the Guardian Druid side, the actual Guardian side. Obviously, you take maul and gore and survival instincts and mangle and then you go ahead and take brambles all pretty standard picks um innate resolve that's where uh it gives you whatchamacallit uh an extra charge of frenzied regeneration and your fr hits a little harder um that's a typically a pretty standard pick although i've seen some builds that skip it and then gory fur for the extra chance uh excuse me, for the, the chance to reduce the cost of your iron fur. Those are all pretty standard picks. But right away, even before you cross that that uh, early talent point threshold where you have to pick a certain number before you can move on, you're already going to see a big glaring hole, or not hole, but a big change, excuse me, uh, in the way you go with the Nocarn build. You don't pick up Berserk Ravage, or at least I don't. And again, I, I need to emphasize that there's not one way to do the Nocarn build, um, and some people are going to have issues with the way I'm suggesting you do it because they're going to say, oh, you're giving up too much. Hey, man, that is valid. And, and this point that I'm giving up for something else, there's a strong case to make that it is overkill in some places. Again, I am just telling you what I have found works for me. So we give up Berserk Ravage. So what are we giving up? We're giving up that uh, the ability for the length of Berserk, which again, remember, remember, we're not taking Incarnation, so we're not getting the, the extended 30 second version of Berserk, we're getting the short 15 second. And because we're not getting the DR, we're also uh, getting it only every three minutes, but we're giving up the ability to alternate between Mangle and Thrash, Mangle and Thrash, Mangle and Thrash, right? So it is a small DPS loss. But because we're not taking Incarn and because we're not taking our Sox Guidance, it really doesn't matter as much in my opinion. What we take instead, and again, this will actually be probably one of the most controversial things in my entire build, is improved survival instincts. So we get a second charge of a massive DR. You can see down here, 50% DR for six seconds every more or less two minutes. You get a second charge of that ability. Um, most of the time, I will admit that when I'm pushing keys, that feels like overkill. But there are a handful of times, um, let me think of some examples, uh, the third boss in Temple of Jade Serpent. Um, anytime somebody butt pulls something, um, Hersia on Tyrannical Weeks, uh, the, the bears in... Uh, Halls of Valor on Fortified Weeks. There are a handful of places here and there I can always point to where it's like, yep, sure glad I had that second charge of survival instincts. If you've been playing bear for any length of time, this is a quality of life increase that you were used to having for years and years now because we always used to have a second charge. Now you have to talent into it. So again, before we even cross that, I believe eight point threshold, um, you can already see something that would be pretty controversial. That's probably the biggest, most controversial change here. Looking at the right side of the tree, you see stuff that is uh, fairly standard, right? Gonna pick up the cooldown reduction of survival of the fittest, and we're gonna get after the wildfire, which allows us to um, proc big group heals pretty regularly as we consume rage. Um, soul of the forest, so that we get more rage and damage from mangle. And I do pick up, this is the only one of the Berserk talents I pick up, and it's mainly because of the talent that's gated behind it, but Berserk, 
persistence, right? So when I pop Berserk, which is available every three minutes, what I'm getting out of it is cheap iron furs and infinite frenzied regens. So what this becomes now is an emergency. I know I'm going to need heals. Um, my healer just died. There's big group damage coming out. Um, and I'm going to need to roll some uh, just frenzied regens on myself over and over and over again. Oh, and or I want to stack iron for a really high because I've got a big pull again. It's nice to have that. That's the only function Berserk serves for me, but it also gates me to scintillating, scintillating moonlight. Um, there's an argument to be made, as you'll see over here when we get to the left side of the tree, that because I'm going kind of the more claw-oriented version, maybe I should get my DR from somewhere else. But um, going with Rend and Tear, where your Thrash spreads a DR, first of all, that only adds up to 6% uh, damage reduction. Whereas here I can get 10 with two points and it spreads more easily and more quickly with Moonfire because I've got twin Moonfire. So every time I press Moonfire, I'm hitting two targets once I'm in combat with them. And then also because I'm taking Galactic Guardian. So every time I proc a Moonfire, it's also proccing a copy. So uh, even if I have higher rotational priorities or if I'm just distracted by mechanics, my Moonfire is spreading like a plague, if you will. And... Um, uh, whatnot, and that is then spreading the 10% DR to basic, basically entire pulls and dungeons. So th this is really a critical part is that a lot of that is passive for me and, and that DR is always up and always up immediately, not like the uh, ramp that Rend and Tear takes. And then finally guys, oh, there we go. Finally on the other side, Rage of the Sleeper. Um, uh, a critical part of the way I use the No Karn build in dungeons is alternating Barkskin and Rage of the Sleeper on initial pulls of mobs, right? Um, you can get, you know, bears Bears require some ramp as many tanks do. We have to get our stacks of iron fur up. Uh, we can sometimes, while you're trying to strafe sideways to go pick up lots of mobs for whatever the, the actual discrete pull is in the dungeon, you can end up in a situation where you accidentally turn your back and now you've pushed dodges off the table. Um, you know, obviously you're, you're focused on other things like rounding up mobs. So you can just get gibbed really easily in those first few seconds when you're vulnerable. Uh, so Rage of the Sleeper, along with Barkskin, alternating those on every pull is pretty pretty big. The left side, let's look at the left side. So um, I go with all the mall talents, Vulnerable Flesh, only because it gets me to the other mall talents. Um, tooth and Claw, huge, huge, huge part of what this build is built around. So Tooth and Claw allows that every time I hit uh, proc one of these, right, which is based off my auto attacks. Whenever I hit mobs with Maul, which becomes a raise in this build, right, when I hit them with Maul, they're doing 15% less damage to me. That's all damage, not just physical, but magical as well, right? Um, I pick up Vicious Cycle for the damage increase because it's easy to pick up on the way. Um, but then I also pick up the reduced frenzied regeneration, which is not part of a standard build, but the ability to heal myself more often, I've found to be absolutely invaluable. And I pick up Earth Warden too, right? This was a classic that every bear used to have in old talent systems where you're, uh, every time you thrash, auto attacks do 30% less damage to you. The next three do. Um, so that can really be fantastic. Uh, Circle of Life and Death for some damage uh, increase, Blood Frenzy for more rage, and then obviously picking up Rays. So Rays takes this awesome class-defining Tooth and Claw talent and makes it AOE, right? So now whenever I get a Tooth and Claw proc and I press Rays, which again is Maul, uh, Rays replaces Maul, now I spread that 15% damage reduction debuff to all the mobs in front of me Again, a huge, huge part of it. So, uh, you know, you got to make sure you pick this talent up. Now, finally, I pick up Pulverize. I don't take it or leave it. I know this talent's been cursed for years and has existed in different uh, formats and whatnot. And we rarely ever take it because it's almost always a DPS loss. The primary reason I take it is because I want to get to Ursoc's Fury, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But I will say this. I, I grumbled the first time I took it because I don't have enough talent points to path to it another way. Um, but it actually pulverized. So now we've got another DR, a 35% DR on a single target, uh, but you consume a couple of stacks of your thrash. So you're giving up a little bit of damage on that target in order to take less damage. Uh, but I've actually found 
this can save me uh, quite a bit because it's up all the time. It's got a 45 second, you know, uh, cooldown, so it's available all the time. Uh, and then finally, Ursox Fury, another talent similar to Tooth and Claw and Raze and Rage of the Sleeper. This is another talent that really defines this spec, right? Um, with this one, uh, Thrash and Maul shields you for 50% of the damage done. So I'm, I'm pounding out big mauls in AOE, and that gives me a shield for 50% of the damage. I'm thrashing, which is giving me uh, reduced auto attack damage with Earth Warden and giving me a shield because of Ursoc's Fury. I won't spend a lot of time over here on the uh, Druid side of the tree. I'll just point out that I take Nature's Vigil because it's a great a, um, group healing tool to help out your healer in pinch points. Um, I take Innervate. Uh, I find that only certain healers actually really need it. Basically everybody other than uh, than an Evoker really could use the Innervate. Um, take Heart of the Wild for the, the damage increase and I'll take Well Honed Instincts, uh, one charge of it for kind of the mini cheat death if you will. All the rest of these are, are pretty standard picks all the way around. So what does this build look like in actual action? Uh, let, let's try to break it down with some visuals here. Like what's your goal with that build? How does it all come together? First things first, let's look at here is 100% of the damage that you're gonna take at any given time. And the object of this build is to make this red bar shrink as much as possible with always on or mostly, mostly always on passive damage reduction just by executing your rotation. So we take a look at it, we've got the, you know, 48, 50%, whatever, you know, based on your armor, um, you know, how much damage reduction you're taking from bear form. And then we've got kind of what every bear will have, those one to two stacks of iron fur that you try to keep maintained at all times, right? So this is this is kind of the baseline, but this spec allows for quite a bit more additional um, low maintenance damage reduction, right? Uh, with that scintillating moonlight talent, plus Twin Moonfire spreading it around and Galactic Guardian passively spreading it around. Uh, you've got another 10% damage reduction out there, taking a chunk off that red bar. And then, um, this is just a little bit of data based on my experience in the last couple of dungeons I glanced through real quick. So more or less about 11% of the damage that I would otherwise have taken ends up being absorbed by the shields from Ursox Fury. So that's every time I thrash, and every time I cast Raze, which is the AoE mole that I've talented into. And finally, to top all that off, about 6% of the damage I'd otherwise take from auto attacks is instead absorbed by Earth Warden charges. So you can see we have dramatically, dramatically reduced uh, the size of the red bar of the damage that we're taking. And again, this is all really quick napkin math based on data from a single 22 key I ran the other night, but you get the general idea. So this helps a lot uh, passively, but also how you actually play matters quite a bit as well. So um, let's talk a little bit about cooldowns that you'll wanna use uh, either on every pull or rotationally. Um, basically, it's Barkskin and it's uh, Rage of the Sleeper there. Both of those, I basically fire those every time I walk into a trash pull or a big boss pull right off the bat. Um, bears can be quite squishy right up uh right at the beginning i mean you saw on that graphic there how much of of our damage reduction is getting those iron fur stacks up well if you weren't fortunate enough to have uh rage left over from the last pull uh you can be pretty squishy right off the bat so uh the nice thing is bark skin's got i think a 44 second cooldown and rage of the sleepers on one minute and it's not only a dr but it's damage it's leech and it's a damage reflect um, so I basically, you know, those are just up all the time in a dungeon. Fire them on the beginning of every pull and uh, use them more or less rotationally on longer pulls as well. When you do encounter damage, you know, obviously guys, uh, the nice thing about this build is that you've got two charges of Frenzied Regeneration as well as Renewal. So you've got your Hot that you can use often because we've also got the cooldown reduction CDR for um, uh, Frenzied Regen. But then we've also got the emergency, oh crap, instant 30% heal to recover. And then finally, you have tons and tons and tons of oh crap buttons, right? So 
Uh, you think about damage events that you're not going to be able to avoid with AOE stops and kicks and things like that when you just got to take the punch. Think uh, Tyrannical Croth, the big bird boss in Algathar Academy, right? When you're going to take hits, if you don't have one of those rotationally available buttons, this is when we're going to go ahead and use Survival Instincts for the 50% DR. Uh, we're going to use Pulverize, uh, which really shines on bosses because the 35 dr on one 35 percent dr on one target or the other place it really shines is in pulls where um you, you know you might be pulling trash but there's one uh you know kind of priority ad that can really shred you um a great example of that would be the uh la the succubus ladies in court of stars they have a shadow slash and if you don't have an aoe stop and you're not convinced somebody else is going to be able to stop it and you're just going to have to eat that monstrous shadow slash throw out a pulverize it's up all the time 45 second uh cd so it'll be up all the time and finally again the way that berserk functions in this spec is that it is cheap iron furs and infinite heals for 15 seconds now having said this you want to prevent damage from happening in the first place. So use your stops, right? So obviously you've got Skull Bash, you've got your kick. Then you have, in this spec, you have a couple other ways to do some stops too, very powerful ones. You've got Incapacitating Roar, uh, which is great because it's AOE. So don't don't really ever want to take Mighty Bash. Um, I loved it back in the day when you could have it with Incapacitating Roar in previous expansions, but take in cap. The other thing that's really great about Incapacitating Roar is that because it's an in cap, it's not going to DR with a lot of classes that have very powerful stuns, right? So uh, you'll be able to use it and you won't have to go, oh crap, I bet my life on that and now I've failed. Uh, similarly, Typhoon, uh, with the, the last round of Guardian changes, you can get the uh, cooldown reduction on it pretty darn low. It's AoE, it's just a frontal cone. Um, so that'll put some stops out there to stop dangerous casts and abilities. Um, you can combine it there with Ursal's Vortex. So if there are places, for example, the third boss in Court of Stars, where you don't want to relocate the mobs, right? Uh, because it can be potentially dangerous, all those imps that, that spawn in that third boss. You can put a Vortex down first and then Typhoon to get the interrupt without relocating them. And finally, guys, racial abilities. Um, if you're lucky enough to play a class, or excuse me, a race of Druid that can stop like High Mountain Torin, Torin, Night Elves, you can use your, your racial abilities to stop some mill abilities as well. And then just real quick notes about the way you'll play. You've got the Typhoon to relocate things, Vortex to lock them down. Um, in this spec, you take Nature's Vigil, which is great uh, healing to help your, uh, your, your healer out in those pinch points in the fights. Innervate, which I already talked about, can be useful. And then Stampeding Roar to move fast. And here's the one thing where uh, this spec really just doesn't have a lot of tools, but it's worth noting that, um, you know, your, your primary damage, really your only damage cooldown is going to be Rage of the Sleeper, which you're already kind of using on pull and rotationally anyway. Um, and it's really great because it's a one minute cooldown. You can line it up pretty well with any kind of trinkets. For example, I use a Windscar Whetstone from Court of Stars. But uh, this is the one weak spot of this of this spec is you are giving up some damage for all the survivability. All right, and uh, that's a pretty good look at the no Karn build, which uh, and how it works and why we choose certain talents and how we do things rotationally for Guardian Druids. Uh, if you've got any questions, feedback, want to tell me how much I stink and that my build's terrible, go ahead and leave some comments and. Uh, and you know, I'll check them out and get back to you. Uh, if you want to see any more detailed examples or you just like the kind of content I'm providing, uh, go ahead and check out my channel on Twitch at Palewind TV, where uh, I'm streaming most nights, uh, at least after the fam goes to bed. Uh, I do post highlights here on YouTube, so you can always check those out as well of dungeons that I complete. So be sure to like and subscribe for more great content. Until then, see you in the next video.